Hey guys, welcome back to Oka Bone. On our last video, you guys were extremely helpful in helping us think of 10 more things to know before you buy backyard chickens. So today I'm going over 10 more things to know before you buy backyard chickens based on those comments and a few that I thought of myself. There are some really good points that I can't believe I didn't think of the first time, so let's dive right in. Number one, chickens need dust baths. I think most new chicken owners have a heart attack the first time they see their chicken sprawled out motionless, dug halfway into the ground. They actually do this for fun and it's actually very hygienic for them too. So they need to take dust baths in order to prevent things like mites. I've heard they can prevent other problems like fleas. There's a whole plethora of reasons why they should take dust baths. Chicken owners tend to do this in two ways. Number one, you can provide a dust bath to your chickens, especially if they're in a confined area, in the form of a small container that can keep in kind of a really dry, dusty type material. It could be just really dry dirt, could also be sand, could be ash, although I've heard mixed things about whether or not you should use wood ash for chicken dust baths, so read up on that and decide if you want to do it or not. Basically, you want the chickens to have a place where they can get really dusty and they can kick up a lot of what looks like a mess, but it's actually going to keep them cleaner, healthy, happier, and cooler. I believe it cools them off in the summer too. The other way that you can make sure they take a dust bath is just by letting them free range, and that's what we do. Free ranging is a personal and property specific decision, so do your research before you just let your chickens outside. We like to free range our chickens as much as possible, and they always find places to dust bathe on their own. Fair warning, if you live in a suburban area like we did with our first flock, they really like kind of that area underneath the overhang of the roof, underneath the soffit I think where it's dry and it's right next to the foundation. So our chickens loved digging holes next to the foundation at our old house, drove my husband absolutely crazy. And we were always trying to keep them out of there. So if you're in a suburban setting, make sure you keep an eye on them, make sure they're not causing any major structural problems for your house. But otherwise that's kind of a more low maintenance way to make sure they're getting dust baths. The second thing to know before you get back your chickens is that although feed is expensive, especially these days, <laughs> there are ways to cut down on that feed bill. So a few ways that we like to do this, we like to feed our chickens kitchen scraps. So things like peelings and fridge leftovers that aren't bad yet, but they're not necessarily what we wanna eat. Something really interesting, I've heard in other countries, it's actually illegal to feed your chicken to kitchen scraps. Leave a comment below if you live in a country like that. But where we live, it's totally legal. So we like to feed them a lot of leftovers, a lot of kitchen scraps. Usually they're pretty happy to eat them. Although I'll be totally honest, chickens do get very spoiled when it comes to treats. And I'll go over that in a second. Other than using chickens as kind of the recycling bin of your home, another thing you can do is plant food specifically for chickens, especially if you have the land for it. So we are planting chicken plots of food this year. That's gonna include things like amaranth, hope I'm saying that right, uh, millet, just basically really easy to grow crops. We do still feed our chickens regular feed, but that's one way we're gonna cut down on the cost of the feed. And a third thing that you can do if you wanna cut down on the cost of your chicken feed is free range your chickens or even just move them around in kind of a pasture or a tractor type setting in your backyard. So the more access they have to the outdoors, the more they're gonna be able to find their own bugs and grubs and weeds and maybe your vegetable garden too, if we're being honest. Chickens can be very efficient at finding their own Food, but of course they have to have the access to do that. So there's different ways to do this. Free ranging, pasturing, chicken tractors. Those are just a few of the options. Actually, that's one of the best ways that we cut down on our chicken feed bill is during the summer when we have way too much zucchini, pumpkins, cucumbers, tomatoes. We like to feed them to our chickens and it definitely helps cut down on the amount of grain that they're getting. Number three, learning about broodiness, breeds, and breeding. So if you're first getting chickens, you might not be planning to breed them. I, most of us aren't at that point, but down the road you might change your mind. Whether or not you're planning to breed chickens, your hens might have a mind for themselves and decide that they want to raise babies. This is what we call going broody. It usually means they're just sitting on their eggs or they're just sitting in their nest box and pretty much refusing to get out except to maybe eat or drink just a little bit. Certain breeds will do this more than others. So some people don't like when chickens go broody because it means they lay fewer eggs and they also are just kind of cranky and a pain to be around. And if you don't let that hen hatch baby chicks, she might stay on there for weeks or even months. Because if there's no rooster around to fertilize the eggs, obviously no chicks are gonna come out of those eggs, no matter how long she sits on there. She doesn't know that though. There are ways to break a broody hen or you can just let her hatch chicks. I won't go into it here. Honestly, we've never done it ourselves. Just know it's something that's totally normal that your hens may do. And if it's something that you really don't wanna deal with, you might look more into hybrid breeds or breeds that are known for not going broody or have kind of had the broodiness bred out of them. 
kind of on that note, if you do want to breed your chickens, just know that there are a lot of hybrid breeds out there these days. So if you breed two chickens of the same breed together, they won't necessarily always have chicks that are that same breed. This is like a whole rabbit hole I could go down. Just know that if you want to breed chickens, look into the difference between heritage breeds and hybrid breeds. There's a whole bunch of terminology and jargon that I won't go into here, but if you want to go down that rabbit hole, you are more than welcome. Okay, another thing to know before you buy backyard chickens is about treats and training. So the good news is that chickens are extremely trainable, and that's because they are extremely food motivated. Our chickens have better recall than our dogs, and that's because we do use really good treats every time we call them. So when we train them to come when they're called, and because they're free ranging chickens, that's really important that they do that well. We like to use grub terra treats. We have a special call that we use, they know the sound of the bag, and that's really important because they know that every single time we call them that way, they're gonna get a really good treat, versus wondering if they're just gonna get like peeling, something that's not as yummy to them. And we also love grub terra because it's actually good for them. So they contain more calcium than mealworms for nice strong eggshells. They're a lot more nutrient dense than just mealworms. We've had so many people reach out and say that their chickens love grub terra, they've helped a lot with training. So I will leave the link for grub terra down below and don't forget to use our discount code Okabode for 10% off. We actually just signed up for the subscription so it gets delivered bi-monthly for us I think, which we are really excited about. Although you can use just about anything as treats, like I mentioned, if your chickens are spoiled like ours, they might turn up their nose at some treats and if they don't know that they're getting a really good treat, their recall isn't gonna be as consistent. These roosters are crowing so much and causing a problem. I'm having to stop every 10 seconds. So I just figured I would hold Lily with me here. Lily is a rooster for sure, but we thought she was a girl at the beginning, so his name's Lily. Okay, number five. This is a really good point. I can't believe I didn't talk about this, I guess just because I'm used to it now, but chicken poop. Chickens poop a lot and they leave it everywhere that they're allowed to go. So if you're gonna free range your chickens in a backyard in like a suburban setting, especially one where you're trying to enjoy your backyard, know that they're gonna leave poop absolutely everywhere and if you have dogs, the dogs they love to eat it and roll in it and do everything gross with it. I'm not a vet, so don't take my word for it. Ask your vet. When I asked my vet, our vet told us that kind of the chicken poop is dangerous to dogs just because it's so full of grain and fat that they can actually get fat off of it. And obviously it's just gross when they roll in it. So we're really glad that we're on more of a farm setting now and our chickens are far away from our dogs where they don't eat their poop all day. But it's an important consideration if you're gonna keep backyard chickens that stuff is gonna be everywhere. As far as cleaning out the coop goes, we just use the deep litter method. If you guys wanna learn more about the deep litter method, there's lots of YouTube videos and articles on that. That means we only clean our coop out about twice a year. It's basically a self composting system. If you know how to compost, you know the deep litter method. So I recommend researching composting first. Everything's nice and balanced so it doesn't smell. If it smells, it means it's not balanced. It means something's wrong. Other people do more of a poop scooping method if you only have a few chickens or maybe like a weekly clean out. All depends on your setup. I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but those are just a few ideas. <laughs> Number six is to just start now familiarizing yourself with chicken illnesses. You can start by just kind of reading up on a few in that blog post I linked. I, I just listed a few of kind of the most common ones, but a lot of new chicken keepers are surprised to learn that a lot of vets really aren't interested in treating chickens or backyard poultry. And so chicken owners oftentimes have to kind of learn about these illnesses, be able to spot them and know how to treat them at a rudimentary level. Honestly, we've been really fortunate to deal with very few chicken illnesses in our household. So fingers crossed that that holds up. In my experience, kind of the more free ranging time they get, the more space they have for chicken, the fewer illnesses and problems they tend to have as a general rule of thumb. But if you have a sick chicken, one of the best places to start, obviously your vet. Always start with your vet. But number two, the other good place to start is kind of online chicken forums, especially if there's like a local group of chicken keepers in your area. I will often see people posting photos of their sick chickens on there. Other people will help come up with ideas on how to diagnose and how to treat that chicken. And we've learned about a lot of chicken illnesses, signs and symptoms, just by seeing what other people have, even though we haven't dealt with them ourselves. So that's another great reason to join an online chicken group if you haven't already. Number seven, this is another really important one. I can't believe I didn't go over it in the first video, but it's probably just because I'm used to it at this point. Molting. Molting is totally normal in chicken. So basically roughly twice a year they kind of drop a bunch of feathers and grow new ones in So that's really good because it drops the damaged feathers that might not do as good of a job of keeping them warm And then it opens up space for new pristine clean feathers to grow in However, chickens do not always get this perfectly on schedule. So our chickens typically go through a molt in the spring and a molt kind of in fall But because their little systems are so spread out. It's usually like a few months of molting, like two to three months. One chicken will start and then it'll kind of work its way through the whole flock. And you 
usually by the end there's some one or two poor scraggly chicken that is going into winter with horrible horrible molting feathering and that's never any good so we have in the past if a chicken is going through a really rough molt and it's getting really cold outside we have occasionally brought that chicken in on really cold nights because although we are all for chickens regulating their systems and getting used to the temperature and not providing supplemental heat in the winter unless it's an extreme, extreme case, if they don't have feathers to keep them warm, they can't do that. So on really cold nights, we have brought bad molting chickens inside for the time being just during the night and then kind of put them back outside during the day. Not telling you to do that as a personal decision, but I think that's part of the reason why we have lost so few chickens. But that specific scenario aside, it can definitely be a shock. The first time you go out to your chicken pen and there's feathers everywhere, it's kind of like a panic moment. You don't know if somebody's dead or eaten or what, but rest assured, in my experience, molting is totally normal and very healthy. The other thing is when they're going through a molt, they will oftentimes lay fewer eggs, so just be a little prepared for that. Number eight, another major one that I didn't talk about the first time around is grit. So know that chickens need grit. Because chickens don't chew their food with a jaw like us or like a dog or a cat, they break their food down with their gizzard. So they have a crop and they have a gizzard. The gizzard is, I believe, where the grit sits. And grit is basically just kind of little indigestible stones and pebbles and that kind of thing. I like to think of it as kind of like their teeth, but they're just inside. We don't provide grit to our chickens because our chickens free range so much, they can find their own grit in the forms of pebbles and rocks and things. But if your chickens are confined or especially like little baby chicks, I've heard oftentimes chick feed is made so that they don't need grit to break it down. But as soon as you start feeding your chicks something other than that baby chick food, it's important they have grit. So sometimes people will forget to supply grit and they'll throw like vegetables, lettuce in there once they start to get older. And then since they don't have access to the outdoors to get grit on their own, and they're trying to break down this more roughage, some serious problems can arise from that. So we like to provide our chicks just a little bit of chick grit from day one just to be safe. They just kind of take what they need and leave the rest. And then once they graduate to the outdoor coop, we don't really worry about it unless they're inside for a really long time. I'll link some grit if you want. If you're brand new to chicken keeping, that's a good thing to keep in mind as something that is important. Okay, I have two more for you guys. Number nine, streamlining care. So in my last video, I talked about how I think chickens are really easy, and I should probably add, clarify, that chickens, I believe, are easy because we have other animals. So if you don't have any other animals and you get chickens, obviously that's gonna change your lifestyle a little bit because you're gonna need to think about when you go away somewhere or if you get sick, you need someone to take care of them. For us, we already have dogs and cats, so if we wanna take a vacation, we know we have to get a pet sitter, and it's really no biggie to add in the chickens to that. But the thing I really like about chickens is there are ways to streamline their care. So a few things that I love to use to streamline their care or make it basically less intensive, number one is an automatic chicken door. We don't have it set up at this current property because we're only here temporarily, but when we had it on our last chicken coop, it was such a game changer. The door opens and closes by itself at a certain time during the day. We would always just program it for after the sun sets so that that's when the chickens go in by themselves. I know a lot of people asked, how do you know everybody's inside? So basically we would check on them every night still, but it just meant it wasn't like, oh my gosh, we have to get outside because the sun's setting and owls could come out and take them and yada yada. So they would just go inside on their own, chicken door would close. We never had a problem with a chicken being let out left outside or locked outside. The other thing too is if you wanna sleep in, you don't have to feel guilty because that automatic door would open right at the perfect time every single day. I'll link the one for you guys that we had. There's a few other options, I'll link those too. Definitely a little investment, but so well worth the cost and way cheaper than a pet sitter too. The other thing that we like to use are bulk feeders and bulk waterers. I will link a few bulk feeders and waterers for you below. As a general rule of thumb, I have to hire a lot less help for the chickens than I would for like our dogs or cats. So I still think they're a lot easier. Definitely a good idea to invest in a chicken run as well. I don't think I would let them free range while we're not here for more than a day. So if you want a run that's really easy to throw together and you don't have to like build a custom one, I'll link the chicken run that we use here if we want to go away but we don't want to free range them. This is the chicken run that we use. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is kind of the legality around chickens. I'm not a lawyer and obviously the laws are gonna differ depending on where you live. In most parts of my country, they are considered livestock. So that means that dogs and cats don't have a lot of rights as it is, but chickens have even fewer rights than dogs and cats do. So for example, number one, if you live in the suburbs, they may just not be legal, period. Like they may not just not be allowed by a homeowners association, but they may be illegal and they might come and tell you to get rid of them or that they'll take them away. So do your research, <laughs> make sure that if you are getting chickens, that they're legal. Know how many you can get. 
um, know kind of the requirements. Sometimes coops are required to be set back a certain distance from your neighbors. Different municipalities will enforce them on different levels, I will say. So know your area know your neighbors because oftentimes the neighbors are really the deciding factor of whether you get in trouble or not. Obviously, if you live in like a homeowners association, you're probably gonna have a lot more stipulations if it's allowed at all. So just do your own research there. Another thing to note though is just on kind of like a larger scale, even if chickens are legal where you live, just look into what happened in the state of California. It was just a couple of years ago, I wanna say it was like 2019 or 2018. Because of what I think is called virulent Newcastle disease, whether you believe that was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, I'm not gonna tell you what to think. If you wanna look into it, look into virulent Newcastle, California, just a few years ago. Just know that that's something they wanna do. That's something that not only can they do, but that they might do because they've, they've done it. And uh, because I'm an emotional person and I tend to get attached to my animals, that's something I did not know before we got chickens and it was really sad to watch and so now I just kind of, I don't know, I guess I, I just try and mentally prepare myself for the fact that that could happen someday. Okay, that is a really dark note to end on but I think it's important that people know that when they get chickens, it's, it's not the same as getting a hamster or a dog or a cat. Like, just important to know. I guess that pretty much sums up the next 10 things to know before you get back our chickens. Thank you to everybody who commented on the last video. You guys left really good suggestions. I didn't get to all of them today. So, leave a comment, anything I'm missing on this video too, and maybe we'll make a third sequel because I know I'm missing so much. You know, anytime people share, especially like personal experiences, as far as what they didn't know, and then they got chickens and kind of shocked them, we can all learn a lot from that. So please leave a comment below with any advice, tips, tricks that you have to offer or share. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can join us again in the future. Everything will be linked in the description and the blog post for you so that hopefully it's not too hard to find. Thanks again for watching and we will see you next time.